Hello folks, Dan Mack here. Hey, Chris Mack. And we're from the Shred Shack doing our top three for the month of August 2015. Uh, this month was absolutely fantastic for new releases and it was actually pretty difficult to not only be able to go through a bunch, but pick the tops. Honorable mention for me, Motorhead, Bad Magic. It's a Motorhead album. You know what to expect. Ahab, the boats of Glen Carring. The only problem I had with it was the clean vocals, but everything else is really, really good. Black Fast, don't know the name of the album, but it's really good. Kind of a breath of fresh air in the thrash scene. Last album I mentioned would be Cattle Decapitation. Never listened to them before. Their album was streaming and it was brutal and awesome. Not brutal tonight. Oh, it was brutal's enough. <laughs> now with the honorable mentions out of the way, let's go down with our top three. Yeah, I decided uh, to do something a little off the beaten path. Might be considered metal, might not be considered metal. The band is called Dreadnought. The album is called Bridging Realms. A very big combination of things. Prog rock, black metal, jazz, led by two female singers, and each band member is multi-instrumentalist. They can play guitar, bass, drums, basic sounding stuff. And then they added some flute, they added piano, organ, uh, tenor saxophone, and even a mandolin gets thrown in there. I have to say that one of my favorite aspects of this band is the fact that there's five tracks on this album, the shortest one being six minutes. Everything else is double digits, and I love stuff like that. Long, complex pieces of music that make you think and not just kind of like beat you over the head and then leave you for dead. I like journeys and going up and down and dynamic changes throughout this song. The highlight of the album is the 14 minute long song, Odyssey. It has a very good jazzy opening. But then all of a sudden, harsh vocals. aren't nearly as heavy as black metal so it's kind of subdued and the drums are like blast beats but it's a good thick double bass sound and it's very steady and then midway through all of a sudden they go into like uh, a harmonized like almost acapella thing So if you're fans of uh, Pink Floyd, uh, the most proggy aspects of Opeth, a little bit of jazz, and you like uh, female singers, this is definitely something to look into. The album in this Brazilian power metal band's career, the eponymous Hebria, I think it's pronounced Hebria, is just some good old-fashioned power metal, which is sadly a genre that I've been unintentionally ignoring in the last few years. These guys mimic the allure of latter-day Halloween. They have shit tons of melody in the vocals and in the instrumentation, lots of double bass drumming, and them high notes. They even managed to pull off one or two surprises. You know, you'll be listening to it and you'll be like, man, this is, this is good, this is heavy, loud, fast, and then suddenly, horns. Ride the tiger! <laughs> Not those horns. I 
having never heard of this band prior to this album's release, I can say they're definitely on my radar now. So, Hebrew self titled album, check it out. Humbling yourselves before what has been accomplished here. All you need to do is look outside. I absolutely adore this band. Not just because of the whole um, aesthetic part of it with their makeup and their nameless schools and all that stuff. They actually write really good music. And this album, they take it to another level. The drums sound huge in comparison to the last two albums. The bass lines are dirtier. A little bit of distortion on that is a little bit more in your face. It's grimy. The guitars are much bigger. Uh, they're more riff oriented this time around. The vocals are very layered. Uh, a little bit more layered than the last two. And there's a couple more choral parts. Adds a lot of atmosphere to the music as a whole. If you want to pick up something that is going to get you into this band, it'll be this. And if you like things that are of the vein of Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, with a little bit more King Diamond lyrics, this is the way to go. Smoke is the debut album from the UK quintet, The Bastard Sons, and their sound is definitely something I've been looking for more of in the last few years. Uh, their overall sound applies elements of hardcore punk, with the, the riffage and the harsh vocals of Trivium, and the, the penchant for melodic earworms that CKY had. A lot of their songs tread the line between alternative metal, traditional metal, and metalcore without really veering too much into any one of those particular genres. Even in the case of the two tracks where the band slows their stride, they still put out material that is loud, engaging, and most importantly, fun. So take a listen to their album on Bandcamp. If you like what you hear, buy a digital copy of it. Number one, I've been leading up to this for a while. This is my big record for August. Soil Work, The Ride Majestic. The 10th studio album for the band from Sweden grabs you right by the balls from the first title track, The Ride Majestic, all the way to the end. If you know anything about Soil Work, you know that they are a melodic death metal band. I think they've kind of strayed away from the death metal lyrical content. I wouldn't consider them a death metal band at all as far as lyrics go. But sound wise, they're definitely in that Gothenburg, Swedish sound. The band is machine-like tight. There is a sense that they try to really step up the technicality of their playing. They're not, ex they were never not a technical band, but this one feels like they actually took it, the time to write really complex guitar and drum parts. Uh, and it, it just shows throughout the rest of the whole album. Uh, guitar harmonies are fantastic. Just the sound is full and it just leads so much into the vocals. And vocals, uh, we talked about Speed a lot of times on our podcast because I'm a big fan of his. One of my favorite things about him is that even during his harsh vocals, you can still understand what he says, which is something that a lot of death metal vocalists don't accomplish very well. And then of course his clean vocals are huge. Overall, 
overall, this is the top album of August for me, and probably for the entire summer. I definitely recommend you picking it up. It's the Rhyme Majestic 10th album by Soilwork. Go get it. Hands down, my number one album for this month is Archer's Call of the Week. After an initial passive listen to the title track, I, I had the opportunity to hear this album in its entirety and it just blew me away. I previously described this album as if somebody listened to Metallica's cover of Sabra Cadabra by Black Sabbath and said, we need to make a full album of that. And then they did. And it's still, that, that initial assessment still holds true to an extent. The first two tracks in this album were pretty reminiscent of Black Sabbath's more upbeat material with a higher tone of James Hetfield singing. But once the title track hits, the album just kind of switches gears and, and can become a whole different monster. They skip ahead about a decade or two and they start getting a little bit more of the Metallica Megadeth influence. Traditional metal than thrash metal, Archer effectively borrows from the aforementioned bands without sounding too much like them, unlike some other bands who like to pay homage to their influences. Everybody's doing their time. Ha! Mortality. Mortality. My only critique would be that if this band were to get a second guitar player and started to harmonize some leads, a la Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, they would be my absolute new obsession. So Archer, Cole in the Week, check it out now. And that's our top three for the month of August 2015. Let us know if you guys agree or you have your own little list that you want to tell us. Find us on Facebook.com slash The Shred Shack. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, username Novus Redemptor. Twitter, up the iron 3314. Be sure to listen to The Shred Shack podcast with me and Chris on our Mixcloud account, Mixcloud.com slash The Shred Shack. And be sure to watch out every single month for a new top three video from us, including next month. Oh, they're still around? <laughs> I'm gonna cut like that. <laughs> Though more traditional metal than the thrashy sound of those two bands, they sound like mm, fucking shit. They don't sound like fucking shit, though. <laughs> no, they sound like fucking good. <laughs> All right. One second. Can you please sound like the character? <laughs> I think you please size like his character. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Jeff. Did <laughs> 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 I just fuck this up? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Am I nailing this interview? Because I think I'm nailing this interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> Slam! Poetry! <laughs>
Taylor those ears. <laughs> Chip. <laughs> Fucking hate you. Ha <laughs> ha